Hi everyone and welcome to Groomopedia. I'm your host Margaret Padgett from Botany Bay Imports. This is a podcast for anyone interested in animal grooming. In these podcasts we will interview groomers worldwide. Let's get started and happy listening. Today we have Jessica Blackhurst from Brush Sweat and She's Pet Styling. Hi Jess. Hi Jess, how are you? Hello Jess. Hi Margie, how are you? Good, how are you? Can you hear me? Hi Jess, how are you? Hi Margie, how are you my dear? Pretty good, how about yourself? Oh, keeping out of trouble as per normal. Well, attempting to anyway. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, should we start off and kick off with this? So Yeah, sure. So if we can just find out a little bit about you. So who are you, Jess? Well, I'm Jessica Blackhouse. Um, I'm born and bred in South West Sydney. Oh, well, Campbelltown. Yeah. Um, I've been grooming for almost 20 years. This will be my 20th Christmas. Oh, wow. Um, I, as I said, I grew up in South West Sydney, um, mainly with with my parents and my grandparents. Yeah. Um, my grandmother um, bred and showed Rottweilers for about 30 years, uh, almost 40 years by the time she passed away. Mm. Um, and I grew up around the show rings. I didn't show much as a child. I didn't find it all too fun. I thought it was all a bit too stiff for my liking. So, but I enjoyed running around the rings with other kids, looking all the, all the other dogs, and yeah, that's pretty much my life. <laughs> how how old were you when you started grooming? Um, I was fourteen when I started. How old? Sorry, fourteen. Oh, okay. Perfect. I thought you were young, so you are young. <laughs> um, yeah. um, what What did you want to be when you were a kid? Um, I wanted to be a vet nurse, actually. Um, I was. I wanted to be a vet, but I knew it wasn't bright enough. Um, unfortunately, I had difficulty, and I've got dyslexia. Um, so I thought I also wanted to be a nurse. Um, I did actually strive for that for a little while, but sadly, grooming pulled me back. So I just yeah, lost my job too much. That's perfect. Um, why did you become a groomer? Um, it was I was actually pushed really a upon. Um, a friend of ours used to do obedience training. Huh. I used to be an obedience from the age of 13 um, at the Farewell or Breeze Dog Training. I was the youngest one there and youngest one on record. And a fellow business instructor asked my grandmother at the park if I wanted a bit of extra work on the side during Christmas. And um, so she came up to me and said, well, you get $50 cash in hand plus lunch every day. So just to be washing and drying some dogs. So, as a four-year-old, I jumped onto that. And yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, and ever since then, I've just been, I kept on grooming. So, they just kept on teaching me. So, I would, they would just do bathing and blow-drying. And then, well, they've gone, well, we might as well teach you to do hygiene. And then, well, on from there, the whole, we might as well get you doing pre-clips and for about four years later, I was doing everything myself. Okay. Very well. Um, so what made you start your your own business? Um, I was, again, another thing I was kind of pushed into. So um, I was always doing a little bit of grooming on the side from a full-time job working um, for other people yeah. and then the last place I worked at just, just wasn't working out or what just wasn't right so I thought well I might as well make the jump I've got the place where 
I can open up a little proper home salon from home. So um, I took the job and I've been working from home for the past year and a half now. Okay, good. I've seen recently that you did some renovations to your salon and it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm absolutely loving my little salon now. So put my own little touches on it and yeah. Perfect. Um, so how, how do you find networking with other groomers? Um, I love it, to be honest. Um, I'm, as many people know, I'm quite a social butterfly. I like to be here, there, talk to everyone. Um, I find like networking such a crucial part of our industry. You can learn so much off people. Um, I've actually gotten jobs because of social networking and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I just absolutely love it. And how about seminars? What made you attend these? Um, I was working for a veterinary group um, back in 2010 and the a brochure just came in our mail one day for Melbourne and I thought I'd really love to start learning a bit more about my industry. I never really knew there was things called competition at seminars. I was just kind of stuck in my own little world. Um, I was happy being a pet groomer and that's all I was. And um, so I convinced my bosses to pay for me to go down to Melbourne. Yeah. Um, I had to pay for my own accommodation, but they had to they pay for the seminars. And ever since then, I've been going to seminars. I've been going to comp. I've just learned so much, not only of the people running the seminars, but just when you just bumming around talking to people, mm. you just learn so much off these people. Yeah. Um, Absolutely amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of groomers out there with a lot of wealth of knowledge and Oh it's, God yes. It's great. God yes. Yeah. So what are some of your achievements? Um well I've only been in the ring for probably the past two or three years. Yeah. Uh, at this stage, um, was probably Melbourne groom last year. So every I went into Terrio Gun Dog and Poodle. Um, came first in all three oh, wow. um, and open. Um, my biggest win was um, the, a standard poodle that I borrowed off Agni um, by the na name of Atticus. And he, he was just a fluke. We were already driving down and Mei Wong sent me a message saying, do you want to do poodle? And I'm like, mm, oh, I guess so. So I came first out of 10 other groomers wow. from never ever placing in Poodle and I've been in Poodle class probably five times um, to coming first out of 10 just blew me out of the water. Well done. Um, yeah, and then I came third in groups. So I even beat master groomers, which again... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. You need, you, need to get, you need to get in that ring more often once it's back up and running. I know, I'm missing it so much. My bank balance isn't, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people are missing grooming comps and socialising and just travelling yeah, and yeah. all sorts of things. So hopefully not too long before everything becomes normal again. <laughs> um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. I'll need to do some online ones, so... But it's a bit hard when you put all pink at them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was your first experience like in the grooming ring? Um, sadly, I had a really horrible experience for my first go. Um, so, I was at Green Quest um, 2012. Um, I had just started working for a big corporate company. I was there for at least two months. And I got a phone call asking, uh, do you want to be in a grooming comp? And I'm like, yeah, I've always wanted to do it, so why not? So I got to the grooming comp and they had already prepped the dog for me. I had never met this dog before. I was a little shit, so um, with a short body, flared legs and a top knot. 
So I'm like, okay. So I went over to my old job and I realized there was some really big holes um, in the back leg. So in the comps, I'm like, shit, how am I gonna, how am I gonna hide these holes? So one of the ways I was trying to hide it was trying to give the dog some back angulation. So halfway through the comp, the owner of the dog actually walks into the ring and no. starts yelling at me, saying, "I'm grooming the dog wrong." No. Yeah, and I'm just standing like a, sitting there with like a deer in the headlights going, um, what? Um, so the judge ends up taking the owner back out, had a chat to me. I almost got disqualified. Um, luckily, the, um, the groomer that was running the team had to talk to the owner later on, settled everything out. But I didn't get into a grooming ring to almost five years later because oh, that wow. had scared me wow. so much. But, yeah, but I'm happy I did get back into that ring. Yeah. So it's the best that I did. Yeah, it's great that you got back in. Um, yeah. How, yeah. How about some of your future goals, Jess? Um, well, even though I've, I've have been grooming for quite a while now, it's only the past probably five or six years actually gone, you know what, this is the career I want to lead. So um, one of my ultimates is to get a bit best in show. I would absolutely love that. Um, and I really want to become a master groomer. So at this stage, I'm somewhat studying, trying to get some passes and do my theory work. Um, and yeah, there's some of my goals at this stage. Maybe in quite a few years' time, once my hands start clapping out, um, I'd love to teach. But at this stage, my little goal is to get my master's, masters. Of not so little, and to get a bit of a show. Yeah. Fingers crossed one That's day. Right. I'm, I'm sure you'll get there, Jess. You're such hopefully, a motivated hopefully. person, so I see you getting there. <laughs> uh, which which breeds do you cover in particular? Um, at this stage, um, I wouldn't say covering, but I'm trying to master a Scottish Terrier. Um, I was quite luckily lucky that literally I had two Scottish Terriers fall in my lap. They literally live across the road. Um, so they're the ones I've been competing with at this stage. Um, gun dogs, so I've been doing spring spaniels. Again, they just pretty much fell into my lap. Um, a groomer I used to work with showed the bringers. So, and um, I'm attempting to do poodle at the moment. So they're my main three breeds that I'm trying to concentrate and um, perfect at this stage. Okay, great. Um, what risks have you made as a groomer? Um, I would say opening up my own business at this stage. Um, especially like I left my um, a corporate company and then I went to another small business um, and they just didn't work out. So when I finally took the push to open my own company, um, that was my main um, risk taking. Yeah. Um, luckily, I had some some amazing groomers that did take me on during that time, um, and did me grow along. Um, but yeah, I think opening my main salon. Um, but at the moment, I'm actually um, thinking about closing my salon and moving into state. Oh. So that's my next big risk. Yeah, so... Where are you thinking maybe, of moving to? Um, thinking about moving to Adelaide. Oh, by, they've got some great yeah. wineries there. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's um, family actually live in the Clare Valley. Oh, wow, and they've good. they've got 55 cellar doors within a 10-minute oh, driving wow. radius. Of <laughs> we, I, I, took, um, I took our team to Barossa Valley... Um, September it was last year. We had an awesome time. <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful day, yeah. So um, fingers crossed in the new year we'll be moving to Adelaide. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's my next big step. That's my next big scary step. 
Yeah. So what are what are some of your um success stories? Um, success stories, um, I think my salon is probably one of my big ones. Um, from opening it up a year and a half ago to now booking book two, three weeks in advance. Um, and there's just me. I don't have Sparta, I don't have any other groom, it's just me at this stage. So yeah. that I think is my biggest success, yes. Perfect. So who who's your worldwide mentor? Um, I've got a few. So uh, one of the groomers that I really do look up to and do idolise is Prue Hammond. Um, she, when all my stuff happened, she's the groomer that took me on, looked after me, and mm-hmm. just she's like my grooming mother. Like I just love her. Like, yeah. She's just the world to me. Um, so other groomers I looked up to is, of course, Melanie Newman, yes, Sharon Hall. They're just two absolutely amazing women that really good to look up to. Um, but I think I've got a bit of a grooming crush on um, Victor Prasada okay. in the USA. Yeah. Um, he's he's um, Scottish Terriers and he's from the you're breaking up a little bit I don't know if it's his connection but um, so do you have any tips for any beginner groomers Jess um, try to find groomers to take you under their wing there's there's only so who live um, to learn in, cl- in courses, in books, and we need to find a group that's been in the for a while that will teach you all these tips and tricks and just take them up and take you under their feet. Um, I've been really lucky in that aspect that I've had a few groomers do that. Um, I came from a life of just, yeah, I'm a pet groomer. I'm just happy to do seven or loss, not caring too much to, you know, I, I really want to elevate and it's because of these groomers have got, come on, you can do better. Um, and that have really taken me under their wing. And, um, yeah, invest in yourself, invest in good tools. Um, I think they're one of my big points. Okay, perfect. Have you got anything else you want to say? No, just... Be kind, everyone. I know I'm really lucky in where I am in South West Sydney. All us groomers are really good. We all talk to each other. And I know in some areas, some groomers can be quite clicky. We're all here to support each other. We're not here to, like, fight against each other. Just work with each other and, yeah, make life easier for everyone. Perfect. I've got one question for you. So your, yeah. t- your tattoo, I really love it. <laughs> um, how, how long did it take? Because you've got the poodle there, the flowers, the clipper. What else do you have? Do you have scissors? Uh, yeah, so it took, it's not quite finished yet. I'm actually going back next week to get touch-ups done. Yeah. So far, it's been a 15-hour sit. Wow. Uh, over three different sets. Yeah. Uh, and this is my little 20 year badge for me. So I thought I've been in the industry long enough. Yeah. Um, I might as well, well have it on my sleeve type thing. So now I've got my little cherry with me for the rest of my life. Um, and some grooming tools and yeah. Mm, that's like me. I've got, uh, I don't know if you saw mine recently. I've got the dog paw and the horseshoe. That's my 25 year old. <laughs> Um, anniversary thing for Botany Bay, and I should probably get a clipper oh. on there, don't you think? <laughs> get a little pair of Austin's clips. Yeah, <laughs> pass it on. Why not? <laughs> it's been this industry long enough. We might as well show it. That's right. We love it, so why not show it? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Jess. It's been great talking to you. Thank you, Margie. Thank you for having little old me. You're welcome. <laughs>
You're welcome. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Bye. Bye.